Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Quipster Film Review Podcast. My name is Vince Leo. I'm the author of the film review website, Quipster.net. Fast approaching 4,000 film reviews there. You can read them all anytime at Quipster.net. That's Q-W-I-P-S-T-E-R.net. Before I get to today's review, I just want to mention for those people who are listening for the first time and a film like I'm going to be doing today, Logan, does tend to attract a lot of new listeners that I'm not really a comic book fanboy type show. Even though I love comic books and I love the X-Men series, when I judge films, I try to be fair within the context overall in the history of films. I'm not really here to praise comic book films based on the level of fanboy fervor that either I have or many other people have for the film. I'm just here to judge it strictly as a film and not whether it's a kick-ass movie. So take that into consideration if you're somebody who's used to listening to podcasts that strictly deal from a fanboy perspective. That is not the kind of show that we do here at the Quipster Film Review Podcast, so you may want to tune out now and go find a place that actually will tell you from a fanboy perspective how well Logan stacks up. Without further ado, I will get into this as a film for those of you who are just into movies and whether or not this is a good film worth going out of your way to see. Science fiction, action, adventure, it's a uh, it's R-rated And that's kind of the novel thing about it. It has strong, brutal violence. It has language throughout, and it has brief nudity. The runtime is actually fairly lengthy as well. It's two hours and 17 minutes. Hugh Jackman returns reportedly for the last time, as does Patrick Stewart also reportedly for the last time. Daphne Keene, Boyd Holbrook, Stephen Merchant, and Elizabeth Rodriguez also appear in the movie. James Mangold is the director, and Mangold also co-writes the screenplay along with Scott Frank and Michael Green. So Logan, as a film, if you're a fan of the X-Men series so far, it's a fitting send-off for Hugh Jackman with his most beloved character. This is his 17th year in his breakthrough role, and that covers nine film appearances as Logan, and this becomes the second X-Men film in Fox's history with the franchise to have an R rating if you consider Deadpool, because the studio now is more willing to take chances with a more adult property after the surprise success of Deadpool. So, so long to the bloodless skewerings at the hand of Wolverine's Adamantium Blades, director and co-writer James Mangold, who also was a director for the prior Wolverine solo spinoff called The Wolverine, he goes in here full bore with the lopped off limbs and those vicious stabbings with a spray of blood everywhere, and and he liberally sprinkles F-bombs throughout that we've only heard a couple of times in some of the previous efforts. As far as the plot goes, it's set in the future, in the year 2029, where we find a world where there are no newly born mutants, and the ones that did exist have all but been completely wiped out. Now, spirit broken and body beaten and losing his ability to quickly heal, and also with a sense of self-loathing to the point where suicide seems an increasingly attractive option, Logan finds himself working as a limousine driver trying to scrape together enough funds to help nonagenarian Professor Charles Xavier, who he has stashed in an isolated facility in Mexico, away from the general population due to the fact that Professor X, without his meds to corral his psychic abilities, tends to lose control of his mutant powers and then ends up lashing out in a seismic burst caused by his seizures. Now, during this time, Logan is introduced to a young girl named Laura, who's an escapee from a mutant manufacturing lab who astonishingly seems to also have identical powers to the Wolverine. They all hit the road for this trip to seek escape from those who are out to take them down while also looking for a mythical mutant sanctuary called Eden. Now, James Mangold, who delighted with a great modern western with 310 to Yuma almost 10 years ago now, he gives his superhero film a deliberate odor aesthetic, even pays some nods to suggestions of such things as cowboy attire as well as this lengthy tribute to the classic genre piece Shane. Despite being set in the near future, this one's still mostly out on dusty roads, and our anti-hero must come to terms with his desire to be left alone while also determining to do what's right as part of this makeshift family. It also gives Logan a chance to protect a daughter figure in a story that kind of resembled to me a recent effort by Mel Gibson called Bloodfather, 
though I think this one has more severe implications to those around the main character who depend on him. Obviously, as I mentioned, this is an R-rated film, but I think that there's more than just graphic violence and potty mouths that sets Logan apart from the rest of the pack of superhero films. There's an attempt to give the titular character a more definition in his character as well as to up the gravitas of the stakes at hand in making him go from outcast to reluctant hero. Now, because it's an R-rated film, they were given less budget to invest into the feature, so Mangold has to call his shots as far as where the special effects will go, tending to favor them just in a few key set battle sequences, and he keeps the razzle-dazzle to a minimum in between those. The film does work best as a character study, which is why the begrudging need to still infuse the story with traditional X-Men plot mechanics as well as ham-handed ones in their delivery. For instance, the battle at the climax is especially artificial in its feel and predictable in where the plot goes after that. And those things tend to give the production somewhat of an imbalance that doesn't fully allow us to take Logan and his plight as one worth fully delving into from a psychological portrait standpoint. So while Jackman's performance goes a long way to making Logan work in the end, the film as a whole does have a sense of unevenness to it, as well as some prolonged lulls to make its two and a quarter hour length occasionally feel a little bit longer than necessary for the purpose of a relatively simple plot line. The villains are also largely forgettable, save for one that looks and acts remarkably like Logan himself, especially culminating in showdowns that will remind some people of Terminator 2. And while the rest of the film is grittier than what we've seen before on the side of the heroes, the bad guys seem like the same old comic book villains we expect in this universe in terms of their performances, they chew the scenery, and they seem to always delight themselves in their maniacal deeds. Supporting players are hit and miss as well. This is a fine debut for the series for Daphne Keene as Laura. She has to work with a mostly dialogue-free role. There's not enough here to suggest that Keene could carry a film on her own, but as part of an ensemble, I think that she'll be an asset if they decide to do a spin-off series with her as well. Patrick Stewart is a welcome presence here too, in what he's publicly stated will be his last turn in the iconic role of Professor X, and the rest of the cast is either workable. Some of them are pretty stiff. For instance, the handling of the other child performances within the film are particularly mechanical, but with Jackman front and center the vast majority of the time, the film still manages to work well enough on a surface level with the acting. However, there are a number of deaths within this film, and one of them involves a group of people who deem to help the mutants to find their destination, and those scenes while surprising in terms of showing us how no one really is safe in this world, they do lack a certain emotional bite that you might expect if the thriller within Logan weren't so superficial beyond whatever pain Jackman is bringing to the role. So X-Men fans particularly will likely be ecstatic to the point of hyperbole, and they'll no doubt proclaim Logan to be the best superhero film since The Dark Knight, if not proclaim it to be better than The Dark Knight, just as they do with every prior film that they loved before and every effort that they will eventually love henceforth. And given the amped up violence as well as the send-offs to one of the most iconic comic book characters in history, played by the man who ended up defining him to a new generation of film fans, you're going to get your money's worth if you really are somebody who stuck with the X-Men films all the way to date. Now, those of you who've always been kind of tepid on the series of X-Men films will probably think that Logan is more of a mixed bag. It offers more depth in terms of its grit and resolve, but you're probably not going to feel the emotional punch from some of the key moments in the film, as you would if you were somebody who was fully invested into the Wolverine and his world of mutant heroes going into it, especially if you love the comic books and you, maybe you've lived your whole life being a Wolverine fan. You're going to come in already with emotional buildup for the character, and those people who've just watched the movies and just want some good action and some escapist entertainment, this movie is not necessarily built for that. So... Still, I do think that Hugh Jackman delivers one of the better performances in his career in his defining role, and it's appropriate to use his character's actual name, Logan, here, rather than the mutant-powered moniker of the Wolverine, because this delves into who the man is inside much more than how he works as a public mutant superhero persona. So Hugh Jackman definitely going to be sorely missed in future franchise entries in the X-Men series, and while I do have a suspicion that one of the more popular superheroes in comics like Wolverine will return in some form, some fashion, 
whoever takes up the role is going to have some pretty big shoes to fill, or I should say some long retractable claws. I'm giving Logan as a film three stars out of four, and that's kind of on the lower end for a lot of critics that are coming out for this film. But I think I think that, that that lack of emotional investment for me in terms of where things go within the course of this film, I really started to feel like I really wasn't connected. I was admiring it for trying to do something different with the genre. Certainly, a lot of people are going to be turned on by the levels of violence that they've been waiting Wolverine to cut loose with throughout the series and will be happy to hear him drop some real salty language like you would expect Wolverine to do. So the bigger fanboy you are, the more you're going to get out of this. And if you're somebody who's just wondering, hey, is this a good film to go out of your way for, even though you may not necessarily be a huge fan of X-Men or even superhero films in general, it's worth watching. But I don't think that you're going to be as enamored of this film as those people who absolutely love the X-Men movies. So I guess that's not a surprise. Three stars out of four for Logan. Thanks everyone for listening. I hope that you enjoyed this review. If you did, I do encourage you to reach out. Let me know what you think of Logan, whether you agree or disagree. You can go to my website and find my contact information there, as well as links to my Twitter feed and Facebook page. If you want to hear more of my podcasting work, I also am the co-host of the Extra Film segment on the In Session Film podcast. Go to InSessionFilm.com for details on that. Until next time, thanks everyone. <laughs>